as you said, 88% of the mobile users we surveyed weren't happy providing information in, in, in exchange for a service, and which is kind of puzzling because most of them are on Facebook. But I think it boils down to we haven't earned the right and we haven't earned their trust yet and perhaps we're maybe over asking for information. And then um, we, what we also found with the survey is that 79% of the mobile users had stopped a download of an app because it asked for too much information. So I think in our enthusiasm to know everything about the customer, we have to rein it in a little bit and step back and go, what is the information we're asking for? How are we going to use it? And do we really need it? And if we're not going to need it, we shouldn't ask. So the point that you made about in the question of, of do people care, because they're on Facebook and they're on Snapchat and they're on Instagram, but I think they care especially from the time that they have children. In North America, the average child has a digital footprint by the time they're two years of age. So think about the, the di digital legacy that parents have to protect and preserve and think about everything that's going to be accumulated on that child by the time they apply for college or by the time that they apply for a job. So while they may not care in their younger ages, I believe they fiercely are going to guard and what our parents say is guard their children's privacy uh, online and in social media. For consumers in particular, we have common sense approach. Uh, one, make sure all your devices have security software. Make sure they're protected from malware. Make sure that your privacy policy is clear. So when you are collecting information, you explain in layman's terms, not in a legal document that's 20 pages long, what you're collecting and why. And listen to your customers. Listen to what they're saying on social media. And when they're unhappy, address it. Privacy and security are two separate words, but in my opinion, I don't believe they can be separated because privacy is everything about you. It's about your behavior. It's about where you're, you're going online, what apps you're downloading, and it has to be secure. I mean, you don't have privacy without security, my belief. According to the MEF most recent survey, we found that 40% of customers are considering security when they're buying a device. Now this is new and this, this change has happened over the last year and as evidence we've uh, a recent announcement we made with Alcatel Lucent. So we are looking at securing devices as well as the data as well as the people that are using the devices. So we're, we're very thrilled to have recently announced the agreement with Alcatel and uh, very proud that they're bundling with their bundling our software AVG Antivirus Pro with their new smartphone. So uh, the difference between mobile and legacy is we learned with, with desktops that you have to have antivirus, you have to have security. You ha it, it was ingrained in us. And then it was like this freeing event when we got a mobile device. So we have currently AVG has more downloads for our security Android app than any other company. We have over 100 million downloads. But still, you look at the number of mobile devices that there are. So this is a learned behavior that people have to learn and, and understand that the same dangers they had on their PC, they have on their mobile device as well. And we're doing everything we can to educate them. And with the help of MEF, um, we hope to, to be able to break through on that. Yeah, our experience is um, it's more about hackers trying to take what you have. It's all about the money. And it's things that you wouldn't expect. Like if you're in a busy shopping center, if someone has this software, a certain kind of software, if they get next to you within five feet, they can basically download the contents of your phone. So they get your information, they get your passwords, they get your keystrokes. If you're in Wi-Fi in a coffee shop that's not protected, someone can take over that Wi-Fi and set up a, an anonymous uh, a, a identifier. So instead of Joe's coffee shop, it may say J coffee shop, and you think you're on this secure thing. So the hackers are getting much more creative, but they're going after mobile because people are most vulnerable right now, and they haven't come to understand that yet. Is downloading something to your device that can take over your device or or put a Trojan horse on it and, and you know end up with access to your bank account. Not a good thing. Um, but the other is um, just by being in proximity, uh, people who are not ethical and are hackers can access just by being close to you without you know going through the traditional download. So you know there are common sense things that we advise our customers all the time. There's the basics. Password is the biggest thing. If you looked at, at what happened with Jennifer Lawrence earlier this year, it wasn't someone hacked into her account. It was someone 
figured out what her password was. So I won't use Judith123. You know, it's much more complex. I change it with more frequency. I make sure that I have software that's downloaded to protect my device. I turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all the time. It's with rare exception that I turn it on. And when I do, I make sure it's in secure VPN or, or home you know, network that I can, can trust. And so in an effort to educate people, AVG has several resources. One, on our website, we have eBooks, we have learning tools that, for the individual, but also guides for parents that you can use with your children, whether they're three years old or whether they're 13 or 16. We also, in looking at the next two billion people that are coming online, we've launched in conjunction with the Clinton Global Initiative, a smart user initiative. And what we're trying to do is to educate these next two billion people because they're coming online not just the way we did in a very simple form of email or, or search, but they're coming on to the social internet of things. And we believe profoundly that if we educate them they will become great digital citizens of, of the internet and we will have earned their trust. So for anyone out there who wants to be part of this initiative, we're looking for partners.